Mm. Um, I'm Stefan. I'm a photographer, and currently I'm based in Beijing in Singapore. And how I started in photography was through mountaineering. So I was actually part of the National University of Singapore's Centennial Everest expedition. And so what happened is my university actually wanted to send a group of people up to the top of Mount Everest. And the entire training took about three years. I was actually the team's designated photographer, simply because I had a bigger camera than anyone else then. And uh, so for those three years, I was photographing my teammates in action on the mountains. And I think through that, I got a bit more interested in photography because I just wanted to capture my teammates well in a, an environment which I felt was very unique. And so the obsession of taking better pictures started from there. And by the time I finished climbing Mount Everest, I had a portfolio which I felt was something which I would consider being a photographer. And so that's how my whole career in photography started. My philosophy as a photographer is really about understanding the heart of the subject matter. Uh, I think to me, I find it very important to understand what I'm photographing. Like if I'm photographing a community and a a, a different environment. I want to do research, do the readings, and, and really get down to the background of who these people are. If I'm photographing a personality, I will make sure I know the person uh, so much before I meet him that when I meet the person, it felt like I know this person before. So I think my um, generally, I want to be able to convey that understanding as a visual form. And so that, that to me is, is really important. I like, I like pretty extreme adventure because, and I like to combine that with photography because I felt it's like one of those times where it takes everything out of you. Like whatever you have as a human, that potential is tested to the max. Um, on Everest, you give all you've got at the mountain and usually it's not enough and at the same time you still have to think about getting that shot waiting for your teammates you know getting into places angles to take that picture i just find it very challenging like uh in denali which i just climbed uh last june that's the highest mountain in north america in alaska i carried about 70 pounds sorry i carried about 127 pounds of gear on me so that's about 70 kilos of gear and um, of which 20 kilos is camera gear alone. So that, that whole experience of having to uh, juggle the physical challenges on the mountain and taking pictures at the same time is just something which I really enjoy. Um, one of the immediate concerns is when you're taking pictures, are you aware of the dangers in front of you? Um, and I think I found that out pretty early in my mountaineering career. Um, I remembered I was climbing a 6,000 meter peak in Nepal and I was taking pictures and I wasn't looking so I fell into a crevasse. Uh, about 5 meters into the crevasse, um, my teammates thought I died. <laughs> but because I was roped up, uh, the, the entire rescue operation took about 1 hour of which by the time I came out, I was actually okay, but of course my ego was quite bruised. In, in Alaska, I was using a D3X and a D3S. 20 kilos, uh, 20 kilos of gear. Uh, well, I mean, that's a glove system. You, you basically have to make sure that your body is comfortable. You are, you are able to stand the elements. And uh, my glove system is, 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 is effective slightly complicated but very useful so I actually wear three layers so I have like a thin glove I have a, a mitt that exposes my fingers and then I will have a down glove if it's very cold the project that I did about the poverty line is to answer a very very basic question um, if you are poor in China what can you do what can you afford and as I research a bit deeper onto the subject, you realize that the definition of poor 
it's a very complicated process. Uh, you have um, official bodies like the WHO um, to come in and give a definition of what poverty line is in China. And at the same time, you have the Chinese government coming in and defining that. So um, I realized that it's very politically sensitive as well as interesting to actually find out what it is. But uh, I determined the line to be 49 cents US, which is about 3.28 yuan. Uh, this is research. Um, yeah, so it's 3.28 yuan or 49 cents per day. And then I took this amount of money and I went to markets in China and I haggled my way to get about 200 items that cost 49 cents US each. And then I photographed them against um, newspapers just to give it that demographic and uh, sort of like a time, time freeze kind of moment. And uh, that series has actually gotten quite a bit of attention. Uh, it's, it's, it's gotten up onto economist blogs, it's been featured on PDN. It's, it's very interesting when you really go into this, what is poverty? And I think poverty is a word that's so overused by all kinds of people. Like, oh, I feel poor because I can't buy the handphone. Or I feel poor because I can't afford a meal. So what is really poverty? Is poverty an emotional term, an economic term, a factual term? What is it? And so by trying to answer this question, I try to present it in a visual form, which hopefully creates debate. And uh, we're going to have a lot of facts and figures as in the numbers that we got is actually pretty ironclad to 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 show that this is indeed what uh, the poor in China is facing. I don't think with today's day and age anyone can do anything that will change the world. You know anything a lot of things has been discovered everything is repackaged and, and resold. Uh, I don't think I'm here to change the world but I'm here to provide debate. I'm here to provide space for people to think and if people can only think while they are in the space fine you know but i think it's it's something like a reminder if it affects that one minute of the day i would say it's fulfilled its purpose the camera is just a tool you know it's it's i think ultimately it's really what you want to do with the tool and what do you want to do as a photographer and for me uh I think the balance is very important. It's very hard to say, oh, you know, I'm just going to follow my vision and, 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 and not do anything else. Um, I'm actually quite a pragmatic individual, so I want to make sure that my, 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 my necessities, everything is met, you know? I also have materialistic dreams like everyone else. Uh, so I do, I do uh, a lot of commission projects. I do a lot of work that pays, but at the same time, I also see the need to allow my voice to come from a very genuine point of view and that's where all these uh, personal projects come in so for me it's 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 been a very uh, interesting juggle so far because I find that my personal projects do land uh, do do help with my commission work and clients are also increasingly appreciating that I'm able to cross genres and to and so so a lot of my clients are also interested in the personal work I do, but yet giving me work that's commissioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah perhaps one of my favorite photos would be a shot of the Everest base camp at night. Uh, the entire picture is almost black, and yet there's a lot of tonality and a lot of texture in, in the picture itself. And you see a streak of light on the right side of the picture moving from left to right. Um, to me, that sort of represents the kind of philosophy I have, which it's really about a subject matter that's quite simple, but yet there's a lot of underlying meaning. And then there's this beautiful mystics that's injected into the picture. I feel that I cannot just be photographing one subject. You know, if, I'm, if, if today I'm photographing somewhere where I'm sweating all over, you know, the next day I will want to be in a studio. It's, and I like, I like, I like to have the variety. And so I really appreciate what, what uh, I can do right now because I'm really crossing editorial, commercial and sort of fine art territories. So I'm always putting on a different cap. 
it's the same equipment, it's the same Stefan, but uh, you sort of put on a different train of thought. And I think that energizes me. So I don't really have a specific subject in mind, but um, I guess I'm always excited uh, when it comes to assignments. So some of the photographers that I really admire, uh, locally I, I love uh, John Klang's work very much. I'm a long time admirer of his work. Uh, if we talk about other international influences, I love people like Vincent Lafore, uh, Stephen Wilkes, Platon, uh, even Chase Jarvis. Um, these are people who sort of cut genres. I like it that um, these are photographers who, who, who sort of have an editorial background, but then they also cross into commercial and art worlds. And for me, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Like one of the photographers that I'm really like, 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 like examining right now is Mark Ziebert, who's, who's photographer turned director filmmaker. So his his works are incredible to me as well. Um, and if we talk about regional scenes uh, within China, I also like uh, photographers like Quentin Chi. Um, I love uh, what's his name, uh, Lu Guang, who documented pollu uh, pollution all across China. I would wait until I think the moment is right, and uh, and you're talking. If the last frame has no expiry date, I'm just gonna witness the rest of what I can with my eyes, uh, because I think the camera is a tool, uh, and what goes through the human mind, I think is far more important.